Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars, where I cover car news, history, and culture. Today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the Endurance, an electric pickup truck from American startup Lordstown Motors. This is Startup Showcase, where I take a look at startup car brands and their models. On this episode, I'll take you through the Lordstown Endurance and show you the exterior and interior design, and then I'll go over the performance specs and features. And finally, I'll give my opinion on whether or not I think the Endurance will be produced and be successful. But first, here's a brief introduction to Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors was founded in 2018 by Steve Burns, who used to be the CEO at Workhorse Group, which is another EV startup. The company was founded in Lordstown, Ohio, which is where the company gets its name from. Lordstown was able to build a relationship with General Motors, and in 2019, GM gave Lordstown a $40 million loan, which was used to purchase a manufacturing plant. Then in 2020, Lordstown acquired the intellectual property for the Workhorse W15 with the intention of building a Lordstown branded pickup truck based on the W15's design. For the rest of 2020 and 2021, Lordstown was troubled with manufacturing issues and accusations of defrauding investors, which eventually led to Steve Burns and other board members stepping down. But good news finally came in late 2021 when Foxconn agreed to purchase the manufacturing plant and then be the contract manufacturer for the Endurance pickup truck. Foxconn also invested $50 million into the company. By this time, GM had completely cut ties with Lordstown, but it still had a good partnership with Foxconn. And at the end of 2022, Foxconn invested another $170 million into Lordstown to help expedite the production of the Endurance model. So that brings us to the present day. Now let's take a look at the Endurance itself, starting with exterior design. The Endurance does use a traditional pickup truck outline and general shape. For now, it only comes in a crew cab configuration, and because the Endurance is targeted towards commercial buyers and fleets, it only comes in white with black accents. At a closer look, there are some pretty unique aspects of the design. The front end features a white body panel with the Lordstown logo, and there is a sort of grill vent design on the bottom and sides of this center panel. There's a black bar trim piece with thin headlights integrated into it. This bar continues down the side of the cab and ends where the bed starts. There also appears to be an ample approach angle and in some shots there is a visible skid plate. The side profile is pretty traditional except for another black trim piece that starts at the front doors and wraps around the rear fender and then leads into the tail lights. Looking at the back, the tail lights are just thin LED strips and below that there's another black bar with endurance written out on the left. There's also a step on either side of the tailgate to make bed access easier. For wheels, the endurance has been shown with black thin spoked wheels that show the orange motor hubs, which I'll get to later, and it's also been shown with more traditional looking alloy wheels and black hubs. Moving on to the interior, unlike most EV pickup trucks we've seen so far, the Endurance is far from luxurious and just has a basic and cheap interior. That being said, the interior still looks good and appears to be very functional. There is one long rectangular piece that protrudes from the dash. It is divided into three screens and each screen is 12.3 inches diagonally. The first screen on the left is the gauge screen and in the middle is what looks like a status screen that just shows things like range, battery percentage, tire pressure, things like that. And then the last screen on the right is the infotainment screen. The steering wheel is fairly normal with the logo in the center and a few controls in the typical spot. Below the screen there are some physical buttons, presumably for the climate controls, and on the center console there is a circular gear selector with an electronic parking brake control. There are also a couple of cup holders next to that. And then behind that in the center console is a large storage cubby, and the door panels are pretty basic but they do offer some additional storage as well. Rear passengers get their own cup holders and some connectivity in the back too. The Endurance is just a hair smaller than the F-150 and the exterior and interior space are pretty comparable. So that should give you an idea of kind of the dimensions of the truck. Now let's get into some performance numbers. Lordstown has claimed the Endurance will produce about 440 horsepower and around 4,400 to 4,900 pound-feet of torque. However, this torque number is likely just a multiplication of the final drive, which means the standard figure is somewhere around 7 to 800 pound-feet. The power comes from the combined output of four hub motors. This hub motor design means that the motor is integrated into the wheel hub itself. Lordstown says that the Endurance can do 0-60 to 60 in 6.3 seconds and tow up to 8,000 pounds. 
The Endurance uses a 109 kilowatt hour battery and should be able to get about 200 miles of range per charge. Overall, these are pretty disappointing numbers, but I'll go into more detail about price and competition later in the video, but just keep in mind that the Endurance is dead last in many of the performance categories. Lordstown hasn't released a detailed list of all the available features, but here are some things we know it will offer or won't offer. So number one is it will have a frunk. There is a bit of a split right now on whether or not frunks matter, and some automakers aren't prioritizing incorporating a frunk into EVs anymore, but for the endurance and work trucks in general, I think it's never a bad thing to increase storage so the Endurance will definitely have a fairly large front storage compartment. As far as tech goes, the Endurance is pretty minimal. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto aren't available, and there aren't really any driver assistance features besides the basic cruise control. There are front and rear parking sensors, but no automatic braking or any other more advanced safety features. And that's kind of all we know right now as far as features go. So without any crazy performance numbers or a high-tech luxurious interior, the Lordstown Endurance really feels like a true work truck which makes sense as the new automaker is only targeting fleet sales for now. So can Lordstown's first vehicle be successful? Well, I think it's a solid work truck, and the few people who have been able to see it in person and drive it have reported solid build quality and good driving dynamics. But there is one major issue with the Endurance, and that's price. Right now, Lordstown is targeting a starting price of $65,000. And while that's cheaper than the R1T or Hummer truck, it's $10,000 more than the F-150 Lightning Pro, and GM is targeting the $40,000 mark for its Silverado EV work truck. Grand with GM, I think that costs will rise uh, to the point where $40,000 isn't reasonable by the time that that car is actually ready to go on sale, but still it'd probably be closer to the F-150's uh, low $50,000 range. And with Chevy and Ford already dominating fleet sales, Lordstown really has nothing to compete on other than price and the endurance is just a really tough sell when it's so much more expensive than the f-150 pro also i did mention earlier that lordstown has had financial and legal struggles throughout its brief history and this combined with the proposition of the endurance would initially lead me to write off lordstown completely and certainly several months ago it seemed that the company had absolutely no future but that has all changed recently with the influx of cash and manufacturing capability that has come as a result of the partnership with Foxconn. With the help of Foxconn, Lordstown was able to get the first endurance models out before the end of 2022. And although the most recent news has been around a recall of these first units for an electrical issue, I don't think this is a huge deal because every automaker issues recalls. And there are always going to be hiccups in the production of a brand new model. While I'm still skeptical of Lordstown's future, I do think the partnership with Foxconn gives Lordstown a chance to lower costs and cut the price of the endurance in the future, which could make it the go-to fleet vehicle if the brand can last long enough to build a solid reputation. So that's everything you need to know about the Lordstown Endurance. What do you think about the Endurance and Lordstown Motors as a whole? Let me know in the comments below. This is part of a series on the channel called Startup Showcase where I take a look at startup car brands and their models. For more videos like this, check out the Startup Showcase playlist on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.